So, hello everyone. It's about time that we talk a little bit about the actual money bit, about the mobile game Mario Record. So, first off, before I go into why I think the monetization of Mario Record doesn't actually quite work, I need to make one thing clear. In my opinion, the game is too free-to-play friendly, especially in its gameplay. Now, of course, as some people might already be very angry at me for saying that, but let me dive into why I think this is the case. So when I talk about free-to-play friendliness, what I want to talk about is how easy is it for a free-to-play uh, person who's playing the game to get through pretty much all of the content the game has to offer. That includes PvP, that includes PvE, and all the different quests that you can do in PvE. And then later I'm going to look at the uh, gacha separately, but for now, just about the gameplay. How easy is it to beat all the content as free-to-play? Well, there are a handful of units that are really trivially easy to get, for example, Yachio, Tsuruno, Oriko maybe, uh, that you can uncap, uh, that are uncapped and you can get to maximum rarity. So if you draw uh, an SSR in this game that's a natural 4-star, that natural 4-star can then be awakened to 5-star, and if you're 5-star you can reach level 100, which is the maximum level that a character can get. There are a handful of non-SSR characters, like 2-stars or 3-stars, that can reach this 5-star maximum, that can reach level 100. For example, as I mentioned, Yachu is probably the best candidate for this, but once he gets uncapped, Nanaka will be along among this as well. And the thing is, once these characters reach level 100, sure, their stats won't quite be as good as if you had a natural 4-star that reached 5-stars. So it is still balanced in a way that those characters don't reach quite the same amount of stats, but, and this is the more important bit, they, first off, aren't that different in stats, and secondly, more importantly, what actually matters in this game is how the number of memoria slots that each character has. So in this game, uh, in case you're watching this and you don't play a manga record, if you want to increase the power level of a character, the best way to do that is to give that character a memoria. A memoria is basically just an equipable item that you give that character, which gives them more stats, and it also gives them a special ability, either active ability or passive ability. If you played Fate Run Order, it's basically a craft essence, and that's the main source of power for each character, and the more slots a character has, the more of these memoria a character can equip. At a maximum, a character can equip two passive memoria and two active memoria, while passive memoria are the best ones since they have the most powerful effects, since they are passively active and not just for one or two turns. But more importantly, they also passively give more attack power if you equip them to a character. So since with the maximum of four slots and with all of these slots uh, allowing you to equip two passive and two active memoria, you can get quite a lot of attack and you get quite a lot of defense, quite a lot of HP on top of any character. Meaning, if you take one of these easy to get characters, get them all the way to four slots and then equip a handful of memoria on them that you level up, they will actually reach way higher stats than if you had a natural four star with only one slot. Now, how do you get more slots? You either draw multiples of the same character, uh, which for three stars you need three of the same character, for two stars you need ten of the same character, and for natural four stars you only need one of the same character to unlock another slot, which incentivizes dupes. However, if you have uh, either a two star or a three star character, one of these lower rarity ones, you can also specifically buy resources to give them more slots from a shop using either a li the limited currency, currency market chips or on some events you get uh, something called bottles that also allows you to buy more of these resources. So even with just free to play means you can get a lot of slots for your characters very easily and the other part of the equation is well you also need powerful memoria to equip on your, uh, on your guys. How do you get some of the most powerful memoria in the game? They are in the unlimited pool that you can draw randomly by drawing any gacha, including the friend point gacha. So the friend point gacha, or support point gacha, whatever you want to call it, also has some of the best memoria in the entire game, like friends, or bible, uh, or Mito rain, which is probably the best memoria in the entire game. They are all in the unlimited pool from the friend point gacha, and you get a free temple for the friend point gacha every single day. Sure, the chance of getting one of these isn't that high, but if you play for like one or two months, you will get a bunch of these really powerful memoria, and besides that, even if you get some of the lesser powerful memoria, if you just get them to a high enough level, 
uh, which increases their stats, they will still give you a whole bunch of stats for your characters and also on a whole bunch of almost every single event you also get free 4 star memoria that might not be that great but you still get a whole bunch of stats from them. So it's very easy to get slots, uh, to get these characters to level 100 and it's very easy to fill those slots with really good memoria. Meaning it's rather easy for free to play uh, people if you play for like one or two months to get uh, like two or three ex insanely powerful characters that are trivially easy to get. Now when you then use those characters, for example, let's look at the PvP mode, Mirrors, where you might use these characters in battle. It might sound daunting to play PvP against potentially whales, but there's a whole bunch of caveats and asterisks attached to that. For example, first off, you don't actually play directly against other players. It's called player versus player, but you don't play against another player. It's, it's still a PvE mode, because what you fight is you fight other people's teams, but you still fight them controlled by an AI, and you always get the first turn. So first off, first turn advantage in this game is extremely powerful because a lot of offensive teams can kill opponents, like entire opponent teams, in two turns, sometimes three turns, but if you get lucky, sometimes even one turn. So getting the first turn is insanely valuable and gives you a huge advantage that allows you to sometimes even take on some of the biggest whale teams you can imagine. Like, I'm free to play team, and I can beat most high whale teams. Not easily, but I can do it at least over 50% of the time I can do that because getting the first turn is just that hard, is uh, that much of an advantage for you. Secondly, because the enemy is uh, played by an AI and in mirrors the AI is, follows a specific rule set, you can actually take advantage of that rule set very easily. For example, you, uh, you always know every single time who your opponent is going to target with which character. And you can abuse the shit out of that to make sure they attack a character who you make sure doesn't die too easily or isn't actually that valuable while your more valuable characters don't get targeted and just kill the opponent. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do there to make mirrors a lot easier and you don't even have to fight enemy whale teams because you always get a selection of enemies that you can also re-roll and the resource that it takes to fight in mirrors and to re-roll en uh, the enemy lineups is also rather easy to come by and on top of all of that you don't even need to win to get the, the pvp resources you just get less of them and the uh, shop for the pvp resources doesn't have that much too important stuff in it like the, it has each one of it has 10 gacha tickets those gacha tickets they do do take quite a bit of uh, do take quite a bit of these resources to get but it's still rather easy to get all of them even if you lose a bunch each day so Mirrors isn't even that important of a game mode and it still can be abused to give you an rather easy wins each day. So the, that game mode is already, even for free to play, not that hard to actually uh, uh, conquer. Moving on to the PvE quest, you have story quests, those are easy. The regular event quests, those are also pretty easy. And then you have the challenge event quests, those can get rather difficult. But even so, as free to play, just with those free to play units that I mentioned, those can be easily doable, especially if you do uh, get lucky and get one of these really powerful memoria, especially Meteor Rain, which is so ungodly powerful that it makes many challenge quests quite a joke. So even in PvE, there's not really too much trouble for you um, when it comes to just beating it. Of course, when it comes to farming, maybe you can't farm the highest difficult quests all the time, but you can still farm rather difficult quests a lot. Now I'm going to show something on screen right here. This is an even more difficult quest than all of the uh, North American server even knows about. This is one of the Japanese EX quests, and these quests are insanely difficult. A lot harder than anything that's on NA. But even so, these teams I can beat with units where they're not free to play units. There's not one. They are not one of these low rarity units. They are natural four stars. But I'm only using two of these natural four star units. One of which is unlimited. And you will see that I carve through those quests rather quickly. However, uh, the longer this quest goes, right now it might look like I'm doing pretty well. But the longer this quest goes, towards the end I almost die because the enemy Kyoko hits for like over 10,000 per hit if she crits it gives herself blast up which sounds insane that she can actually deal that much damage on blasts um, when she also takes like 90% less damage from blast discs which is absolutely absurd because she also has like 550,000 HP it's absolutely insane but even so also if the enemy ever gets a magia off even once i probably die unless i can meteor rain it so yeah these quests they are really really difficult but even so as a free to play with just two units 
and only a handful of somewhat decent memorias and meter rain, I can just get through it. The third unit that I have is a support, and you can just take any support that you want, and they are at full power. So, even those hardest quests, I can actually just do. It, it, it is a photo finish at the end where I almost die, but I've done this quest multiple times, and even so, uh, I beat the quest maybe like 80% of times, which for the hardest quest you can imagine, that is supposed to be a one-time clear. Like these quests, you don't get anything for doing them multiple times. These are supposed to be one-time clears, and they're supposed to be that difficult. Even so, I can kind of do it. So because of all of that, I think I've kind of shown you guys that it's not that difficult to um, beat all the content in the game as free-to-play. Now, what about the gacha? And a lot of people always get angry about the gacha. The gacha has... A, a lot of people that get angry about the gacha in this game haven't played many other mobile games or have kind of a weird view of mobile games. Um, so, first off, in this game you have a pity. If you don't get a natural 4-star in 100 rolls, you are guaranteed to get a natural 4-star. Now, some people say, okay, but the focus, the rate-up girl, you only get at 60% chance and 40% that it isn't a rate-up girl. Yeah, that can suck sometimes, but you're always guaranteed in 100 dollars to get at least one natural foster, which is a lot more than you get in other mobile games. And even more so, um, the currency to do rolls and free rolls like gacha tickets are given out at a fairly decent rate, a lot, like, you get a lot more gacha currency in this game than you would in, let's for you say, for example, pretty much any Final Fantasy mobile game, um, or in Frank Run Order. <laughs> so the actual amount of almost guaranteed to guaranteed SSRs that you get each month or each two, three months, however um, long you want to uh, look at, is higher than in quite a few other mobile games. Not not all of them. Like there are also some that give out way more SSR, but we we'll get to that later. And on JP, you actually have two independent pity systems. Because and on the Japanese server, whenever you do a roll, you get one Mitama coin for each roll. That means on a 10 roll, you get 10 Mitama coins. If you get 300 Mitama coins on the same gacha, it has to be the same gacha. If you go to another gacha, the coins disappear sadly. So if it's on the same gacha, 300 rolls, um, you will just be given in the shop the Focus 4 star for free on top of everything else. And I say, I want to stress on top of everything else, it does not interfere with your regular pity rate. If your regular pity rate is at 90 and then you're at 300 rolls and you go and buy the natural four star, uh, that buy that focus four star, you're still at 90 and you can just do another 10 roll and get another natural four, uh, natural four star. Wow. So the Japanese server even has double pity, which is absolutely insane. Some, some people call it sparking uh, as well. Now, when it comes to getting dupes in this game, if you want to have a character that's really, really good, you need to have them at four slots, meaning you need to roll the same character, the same natural four star, four times. Because what each time gives you one slot for that character. So if you get spooked a bunch by the same character, so for I need to mention that there are limited characters that are only available during their specific fate weave or their specific gacha, and there are unlimited characters that you can always get no matter what gacha it is. And if you get spooked by uh, natural four stars that are unlimited, too often it can feel really bad. But the thing is, there's also diminishing returns on that. If, for example, you get spooked by the same uh, natural four star that is unlimited too many time, times, you will get slots for that character. You will get many, many slots for that character. And it is just possible, let's say for example, you want to roll for uh, characters, but instead you keep getting Ren, for example. Ren is a really good character. Maybe not one of the, or maybe not the best dark character, but it's still one of the best dark characters in the game. So if you repeatedly get spooked by Ren, and you have Ren at three slots or even four slots, congratulations, you now have an insanely powerful unit just by getting spooked. Even Momoko, which a lot of people make fun of for being one of the worst units in the game, Actually, Himika is way worse, but even so, a lot of people make fun of uh, getting spooked by Momoko. But once you have Momoko at four slots, she's still pretty darn powerful. A lot more powerful than any other character would be at one slot, or maybe even two slots. Like, even if you say, for example, that Tart is one of the best blast gorillas in the game. If I have Kokoro uh, uh, or Momoko at four slots, I'd rather take her, because four slots is just pretty darn powerful compared to just being one slot or two slot. So f slots are so important that even if you get spooked by the same character too often, you'll still have an insanely powerful unit. 
also, so between getting quite a lot of um, um, of these uh, gems that you need to roll the gacha and how powerful slots can be, so if you get swooped by the same character too many times, that does mean that if you just roll the gacha enough, you are almost guaranteed to have some really powerful units at some point in not like not longer periods of time, like a year or something, but we're talking like two months maybe, which for some people might be a bit too long, but we're talking about this could be some of the most powerful, even the most powerful unit in the game and you get four slots off just because pity exists and even double pity exists. Wow. Of course, some people also say, yeah, but what if I want to collect all the units? What if I, for example, want to have two or three unlimited units that are in the gacha one after another? That sucks. That's just the reality of gacha games that you will not be able to four slot all three of these characters. You might not even be able to two slot all three, three of these characters. If you get extremely unlucky, you might not even be able to get one of each of these three characters. But that's just the balance of being free to play. If it was even easier as free to play to get the units you wanted, then there would be even less incentive to actually pay money. Because let's not forget, this is supposed to be a game where you're supposed to at some point pay money, which is kind of what this video is about. So the fact that you can already get really, really powerful e units with only somewhat decent luck is already pretty absurd. On top of that, when you, we move from unit to unit, I would argue there's almost no or even no power creep in the game at all. Now, some people might point at something like Yosuru. Yosuru is a unit that has been released recently on JP who is insanely powerful. The best Blast Grid in the game probably. Way better than Ashley. Like, don't even think about Ashley with that. Um, but here's the thing. When I think about power creep is I think about the average amount of power that each unit has that is being released. So if you average out, let's say, you go by the 10 newest units and you compare them with the 10 oldest natural four stars. The 10 newest natural four stars compared to the 10 oldest natural four stars have about the same power if you average it out. Like for example, Mummy is still one of the most aggressive characters in the game. Ren is still pretty darn powerful, uh, one of the best dark units in the game. Um, Rena still is an absolute magia beast that just completely destroys you. Turn to magia easily with, Ren, with Rena, which is absurd. Like, there's some absolutely absurdly powerful units that are rather old. Kyoko, still one of the best, if the second best uh, Fire Blast Gorilla in the game. The best Fire Blast Gorilla in the game is also Kyoko, Summer Kyoko. Amazing. Um, so, I mean, I would even say that uh, Kyoko is, to, is like the second best fire unit in the entire game. And she's, one of, she's like one of the first fire units to be released. So, you see, even though you might say, oh, but Yosuru is really powerful. Yeah, but even older units, even some of the oldest units, are still really powerful. Like the average, the average amount of power between each of the characters is still about on power. It's not like every single new character that gets released is better than every older character gets released. Like in Fire Emblem Heroes. <laughs> So, the, since with the average power level staying the same, also even with Memoria, there's a lot of really, really terrible Memoria being released. I would, I would almost say that it's reverse power creep. Like, I think that uh, I Made Friends, uh, Bible, Sword, which lies in space between Light and Dark, uh, Meteor Rain, some of the most powerful Memoria in the game are really old Memorias. So, it's almost reverse power creep with Memoria, like power fall down, power descent with Memoria. Like, the new Memoria all shit. Okay, not all of them, but there's some really shit memorial that are being released. So if there's also no power creep, the game is too easy. And it's somewhat easy to get uh, at least some really powerful units through the gacha, but not collect all of them. Then here's the question. Why would you pay for the game? There are some answers to this, of course. For one, you would pay for, uh, for gems if you wanted to collect every single character. If you are free to play, it's almost impossible to really have every single character, at least at one slot. That's just not gonna happen. So if you really want to have every single character, you would pay money for that. That's understandable. If you want to do ranked mirrors and get the highest ranked mirrors rank, you would probably want to pay to get some of the best limited memory in the game, to get some of the best limited characters in the game as much as you can. Although getting the highest rank mirrors rank is also doable as free to play, it's difficult, but it's also very much doable. Because of everything that I noted above about mirrors, 
it's still very doable to do that in ranked as well. Um, I've seen plenty of free to plays who have gotten the highest rank in Mirror's rank, which sounds absurd that free to plays get to punch in the same area as the highest power whales, but that's just Mirror's for you. But you might also want to whale for the, specifically for that purpose. On Japanese version, what you might also want to do is you get spirit enhancement materials, more spirit enhancement materials if you roll on every single banner. So you might be incentivized to say, oh, I want to do spirit enhancement, so I'm going to roll on some more of the banners because the Mitama coins that I mentioned earlier can also be used to buy spirit enhancement materials. That's cool. However, if you're free to play and you only need four to, uh, for like good characters, maybe three good, really good characters. If you only really need three really good characters and you only need spirit enhancement for like three really good characters, you, you don't need to actually buy gems to get more materials at all because you still get a whole bunch of spirit enhancement materials just by playing the game. It's a lot faster if you buy stuff, but even so, you get enough to just get enough, uh, get like three or four characters spirit enhanced, no problem. So even that, it has its caveats. So it, 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 there's not really too much great stuff to actually pay for and the actual rates, like how much, how many gems you get per dollar spent is also not that great. So why pay money? It really doesn't look good. And I think that's also one of the main reasons why on North American uh, server uh, the, actu the actual earnings for this game aren't looking that great. On the Japanese server they're looking a lot better, mostly because Japanese people really like buying kawaii lolis. Um, but North American doesn't really do that too much. So North America goes for like more all-out fans, so I have the feeling, and more memes. But my record doesn't have too many memes outside of my report. Anyway. So how do we do deal with that? Where do we go? Now that we know all that, where do we go? How can we make it so that Mario Record actually makes some money? But because I wanna, I'm gonna talk about this why, but even more so, can we actually do something that not just makes more money, but also adds something for the players? That just makes it so if you want to spend money off the game, you get more out of it because this should be probably the number one priority. If you spend a dollar on this game, you want to get something for it. Right now, because of everything that I've laid out, it seems like you don't really get too much for it. Wouldn't it be great that you that you would actually get something for that? Something that's worthwhile? Something that would make it nice to have spent that money? And you might think, okay, oh no, he's talking about, about making money. I want to be free to play. I don't want to. Want, I don't want games to go full on sell out. Oh, it now costs ten thousand bucks to play the game. Or oh, give us money. And I don't want that either. But you would still want the game to make money because here's the thing: if a game makes money, the game will stick around. The game will have more content, more characters. Maybe if the developers that make the game have more money at their disposal, they can make more cool stuff. Because making stuff costs money. Running the game costs money. If they have more money, it is reasonable to assume that they would be able to do more. The game would probably become better if they have a little bit more in their pocket. Of course, that is not always true. In some cases it's true, like for example, Azure Lane had a complete overhaul with its entire UI, had many more stuff, had so much more stuff added to it. I think it precisely because they had money uh, that they could spend to make so much more cool stuff that I think the evolution of Azure Lane becoming way better was precisely because they had so much money. But also, you can also kind of give us a anti-example Fake Run Order, which has shit quality of life. I've played Fake Run Order for three years. I've played Fake Run Order longer than Marga Record, okay? So don't give me that in the comments. But the actual quality of life stuff in uh, Fake Run Order and even the gacha rates are so horribly stacked against the player and the quality of life is so shit that you wouldn't believe that this is the most lucrative gacha game that has ever been created. Like they could put so much more effort into it than they want. I don't, I don't even know what they make. What do you? What do they even do with the money? Oh yeah, they put it in the arcade game and like side content and merchandise. They don't even use the money to make the game better. Anyway, let's not talk about that. But yeah, it would be great for if you like the game. If you like the game, you would want it to make more money. But like I said, maybe we can find ways to make money that also benefit the players and makes makes them get more out of it. And 
before I talk about what I would like to do and what sort of ideas I have, I wanted to take a step back and look again, once again, at Azure Lane or Azure Lane, however you want to pronounce it. It's kind of hard because it doesn't have an E at the end. It's like Azure with like an R at the end and not an E, whatever. So the thing about that game is I played that game for over a year once it got released. Like I played that thing since release up until like one year, the year anniversary, a little bit after that as well. And here's the thing. If you have now played Azure Lane, here's the gotcha of Azure Lane. It's really 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 easy you wouldn't believe how easy it is to get ssrs in that game when i stopped playing azure lane which i think was right before the development thing happened where you could get actually I don't remember the time now but i think it was before you could get like the development ships uh, i don't know when i stopped playing azure lane i had about over 95 percent of every single character in the game and that includes ssrs with every single SSR that I had, I think if you count just SSRs, I had like all but one or something. I like all but one SSR, which is absurd. But also, not just that, I had them all at maximum power. Maximum awakening, maximum level. Because in that game, you can use dupes to make your ships awaken, basically increase their level cap. But you don't need to. There's other materials you can use. Even for SSRs, there's other materials you can use to awaken them and make them have, make them be more powerful. So you only need one of each SSR for them to reach the maximum power. Dupes don't really give you anything important in that game because you can substitute dupes with other stuff with the booleans. They're cute. Um, so the question then becomes, if you listen to this and you think to yourself, wait a second, if you can get every single SSR in that game rather easily and when new content comes out and you can just get the new SSRs right away and then even get them to maximum power level by, without having to have multiple dupes, why would I pay money for that game? And where's the draw for that game? I can also tell you that the gameplay of that game, it's slightly harder than my record, but even so, I, would, I had all the content beaten, like that wasn't an issue either, so the, the, the content wasn't that difficult either. Um, so the question really becomes, what would you pay money for in Azulane? And you might think to yourself, you might also know, Azulane makes a crap ton of money. They make a crap ton of money. How do they make a crap ton of money if the gacha is that easy? And here's the, here's the answer, and here's what, what we're gonna go over into, um, the Mago record part again. They make a crap ton of money because they have a shit ton of skins that they sell. And those skins, they are really pricey. But guess what? They're so good. And they also show in combat as far as I know. Yeah, they do show in combat. Um, that everyone just buys them. You can also get skins for your attacks. Like every single attack that you have, like your planes, your torpedoes, your regular shots, you can get you can get skins for those as well in like boxes. You buy a box, open it up, whoa, you will get a new skin. I have the nep skins, they're really cool. Wasn't that after? I don't even remember. I really forgot my timeline. Anyway, so they made a crap ton of money just with skins, and also you can marry your ship girls, uh, which you can also pay money for. But I'm not gonna bring marriage into my record. No, we're not doing that. We're not gonna have no characters marry. Uh, unless it's Rika and Ren, it's like, I wouldn't be against those two guys marrying. Or Masuran and Kokoro, and you're like, are you not in maybe? I don't know. But even so, let's bring it back. What can we do now, now that we know how Azure Lane, a game that has a similar pr approach to free-to-play friendliness, Azure Lane is the one game that I would say is too free-to-play friendly. It's too easy to get exactly what you want in that game, apart from skins. Now that we know how they make a crap ton of money, can we do the same in my record somehow? And you might already be one step ahead and also know, yeah, but there are skins in my record. There are costumes that you can put on your characters. Um, there are clothes, but here's the thing. And this is the baffling part. You can only see those skins either when you select them in the menu or on your home screen on your home girl. You can select one girl to be your home girl. And on that homegirl, you will see their costume. That is it. There's no other way to see your costume. They don't show in battle. They don't show in the character select screen or on your discs. Or they don't show in your friend list, support list. They don't show anywhere. Anywhere. They show nowhere apart from your homegirl. So if you buy skins for a character, and you wouldn't buy them with real money, you buy them with uh, event currency, for example. If you get skins for a character, that, you, that isn't your homegirl, they're useless. Only your homegirl skins have any use to you whatsoever. And you can only see one of those skins. So in theory, you only need one skin in the entire game and you wouldn't really miss out on anything. So what's the point of skins in that game? They also aren't available for real money. So 
how, can we maybe make something happen with this? There's also some other problems that I'm gonna get to later, but here's the thing that we can do. Why don't we just create special costumes, okay, that actually show up in battle, that show up on your card art, that show up on your support list, that actually people can see, that you can see, that other people can see. They show up in the discard, for example. I know some people might say, but that's seasonal units. I'll get to that in a second. So first off, of course, you would mark these. You would mark them as you mark these characters as having uh, these um, costumes. So for example, when you see the character on their card art, so for you would maybe see on the corner of that card art, you would have a circle that shows the main character. For example, it's a costume from Madoka, and then the tops in the corner there would be a circle that has Madoka's face in it, just so you know, okay, this is Madoka. But then the most of the card art, the rest of the card art would be the actual costume. So it's marked. This is a costume for Madoka, but this is the. Um, uh, this is the costume for it. Maybe if you are in the game, you can maybe click on that card and it would you could click on the portrait of Madoka and it would zoom out and show you the regular card art for Madoka. So you could still have access to that. And of course, seasonal units wouldn't have that. They would just have the seasonal card art. Then in game as well, you would see that character. You would see the character with that new skin. And here's the important bit when it comes to um, actually creating those from a developer's standpoint. Um, you would have to just swap out the sprites. You wouldn't create new animations for this, like uh, new ways your character would move. Because of course, your seasonals, they move different than your character. Like for example, regular Madoka has a bow and you use the animation of her drawing the bow, uh, which is rigged differently than if you have Madoka having her Hanitsuki paddle or whatever, paddling the Hanitsuki, well, I don't even know what it's called, paddling the thing. That's of course a different type of animation. But you could just have the same animation data and just color over the uh, animation bits, like cover over the sprites. You could do that. But yeah, I want to mention something that just in case someone from Aniplex uh, is watching this or maybe from, from not anyone from FR Samurai because they're Japanese, but even so, um, if, you got, if you got inspired by my ideas, I claim no legal ownership of my ideas. And even more so, if any one of the developers wants to use any idea that is presented in this video, but feels like they can't because of legal issues, I forfeit all my rights to the ideas presented in this video and I am also willing to put that on paper if necessary. Not that whatever happened, but just in case. Uh, you know, even if it's like a 0, 0. 0. 0. 0.0001% chance that that could ever happen, I wanted to make sure I mentioned it here. Moving on though. So they would show up in Battle and like I said, you would just paint over the uh, older sprites with newer sprites. So I don't think. I'm not exactly sure exactly how it is programmed and created in game, but I assume you could just paint over the uh, other and uh, the other sprites with newer sprites, and it would, as long as you make sure that they don't clip over each other in the animations, it would probably be fine. Which also means that the battle costumes shouldn't change anyone's attack animation because changing attack animations that's what seasonals are for. Also, costumes wouldn't change stats. Costumes wouldn't change elements. Costumes wouldn't change any of that because that's what seasonals are for. They wouldn't change Connect, Magia, none of that. That's what Seasonals are for. It's really just a visual for that character. And of course, you would make sure that the Seasonals still look uh, much different and it's still obvious that they are a Seasonal. How would you get these battle costumes? Now, you could just say, oh, you, let's say there's just a shop and you can buy them with real money. Cool. I'm not quite sure I want to go exactly that way that I just say, okay, here's a special shop and it says like this Madoka costume costs five bucks or whatever. Uh, they could potentially do that. Some other some other games do that. Um, but I think it would probably be more in line with the rest of the game if it required a special currency. And you could potentially get that currency by just playing the game as free to play, but not a whole lot of it. That's the point. So with the, the problem with Spirit Enhancement was, I assume the idea behind Spirit Enhancement was, it's something that you can get as free to play, but if you, if you pay for it, you get a lot more of it, and we want to incentivize people paying so that you get more of this resource. The problem is, they gave too much of this resource for free to play, and on top of that, um, you only need like three or four of these of your characters having spirit enhancements so they can carry you for the entire game and just steamroll all the content that's in the game. Like in the clips that I showed you, like both of my cool Homura and Ren had full spirit enhancement and it shows how powerful they are and my support also had full spirit enhancement, I think. No, they don't. Uh, it was, that character doesn't even have spirit enhancement, but yeah. So that kind of failed. They kind of failed with the idea of making you pay for, for spirit enhancement because, like I said, as free to play, 
you can still just do it. Um, so what I would do is you get only very little of this currency through playing the game. So for example, each event might have 10 of these, I'm going to call them costume coins for now, because everything else is a coin. Um, so you could get maybe 10 costume coins per special event, but getting just one, one costume might take like 40 or 50 coins. Okay, so it would take many, many events to get some of these. But there could be a special shop where you can buy uh, these costume coins for paid gems. And I want to make sure that we're not talking about regular gems, but paid gems. Um, now, you can, this is a point of contention. We could also say, yep, yeah, maybe you can make it not paid gems and then uh, free to play could get it too get it too, but the, the, the whole point of this system is that you have to spend money to get a really good access to it. If, for example, you are free to play, and for example, you're like me, who says, I only need three really good characters, so once I have three really good characters, I don't care about the gacha anymore, I can just buy costumes, and then I would never play, pay money either. Um, so the point is that even if you have no use for the gacha, you still have use for paying money and instead don't just uh, roll over the entire shop as free to play. So I would still want to make it either paid gems or what you could also do is whenever you buy gems, let's say you buy uh, the, the smallest gem pack, you get two or three costume coins. But if you buy the biggest gem pack, you get a lot more costume coins and you would do that thing where the more you pay, the more bonus costume coins you get on top of everything. That's also a thing uh, where you would definitely have to pay to get these costume coins. Um, although if you do end up paying that way, you would end up with a lot of gems that you might not have any use for. So that's another point of contention. That there's a lot of variables that you can adjust to this. I'm not saying that it has to be this way. I'm just throwing ideas out there. So this is basically how you would come to these uh, costumes and you could create more and more costumes. Sadly, I would think that if you were to do this, you would have to create completely new costumes that you don't have right now. Um, like right now, um, you already have a whole bunch of costumes in the game and I would make sure that the battle costumes that you could get are different costumes. Like I wouldn't take a costume that you have right now and turn it into a battle costume. I would make sure to create specific new ones um, just so that players have to go out and buy new ones. And uh, I think that the distinction to seasonal also would still be strong enough if you signpost it enough. You, you can't, of course, just sit down and say, yeah, no, seasonals already look different, can't do it. Or you could think about how can we signpost it. Like I said, you could signpost it with specifically showing the real character's face on um, the card art. Uh, and you could also signpost it in game by seeing that, oh, they have different animations that look very different. Madoka still has her bow. You would not think that that's the another alt if it's still just a regular bow. So you can think about ways to signpost it correctly. And the thing about this is that now, if you actually pay for the game, you actually think that you're going to get more out of it. You're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. And getting more bang for your buck is exactly what this game needs in order to actually create a lot more money. I'm trying to make you money, guys. Because right now, like I said, because everything that I mentioned, you don't really get too much bang for your buck, but by actually having something like battle costumes, I think you would get a lot more for it. And of course, it would be quite a bit of work to create some battle costumes, but as I already mentioned, if it really is possible to just paint over the battle sprites you already have, just swap them out for other ones, I'm not even sure how much more work it would even be. Um, the most, the, the, uh, the most work that would go into battle costumes would probably just be to rig the life 2D because I think life 2D might actually be a bit more work. But then again, you can just say, instead of creating two new normal costumes that only show on the home screen, we're going to create one battle costume. Meaning, instead of creating two life 2D rigs, we only need to create one life 2D rig, but we have to create an in-game rig as well. And I think that would maybe even out, I'm not 100% certain. But I think it would probably not create too much extra work for potentially a way higher payout. And now for the final bit that I wanted to mention is that there's also one other big problem that this game has in, in terms of its monetization from, from a different standpoint. What are the most popular characters in the game? The number one most popular character in the entire game that I've seen in polls, on surveys, on the Discord, on my Discord, on the Micro Record Reddit, on all of these polls, who is the number one Micro Record character? It's Ren. Ren is the number one most popular Micro Record character in both the Reddit and the Discord. And here's the thing: Ren is one of the oldest characters in the game who is unlimited. If you play the game for a while, for a few months, 
and you roll on limited balance, for example, the chances are pretty good that you will just randomly get a Ren. So she's the most popular character in the game, but a lot of people have her. And since she's unlimited, if you were to do a Ren banner, a lot of people wouldn't want to uh, roll that banner. People in general don't want to roll unlimited banners, especially for older characters, because they feel like, oh, I can just get this character in another banner randomly, so I don't need to roll for it specifically. So the problem becomes, even though Ren is extremely popular, insanely popular, and her uh, gay girlfriend, Rika, as well, even though they're so insanely popular, they don't make any money. Maybe they make a little bit of money if you were to run a Ren gacha. But it's not a whole lot. Same with Mayu. I know Mayu is also another character who is strangely rather popular on Japanese especially, who doesn't make that much money uh, because they're just unlimited. So the question becomes, how do we monetize those characters? We make battle costumes for them. That's how you could monetize Ren really easily. And I think that would also solve one of the biggest problems that the monetization also has in that super popular characters don't actually make that much money. You might say, oh, but when the game released, there was Kyoko. Kyoko's an unlimited character and she made a lot of money. Yeah, but she's Kyoko. He was, he was at the point the best character in the entire game at that point. So people rolled for it for gameplay reasons as well. And more importantly, that was at the very beginning of the game when everyone was completely new uh, and the game still had a ridiculous amount of players and the player count sadly dwindled after that. So we had the most amount of players for a gameplay number one unit and it's Kyoko. What more do we need to say? So it makes sense that there was a big spike for that. But if you were to rerun Kyoko now, for example, you would probably make barely a dent in your earnings. Uh, so I've, that's basically how to explain that. But what other super popular characters are there? What are the more popular characters after that? Alina is super uh, popular. She's unlimited. Karin, super popular. She's unlimited. All these super popular characters, they're all unlimited. And there's also, they're also rather older characters. So even though they're so, so super popular, you make barely any money, money off of them. So give them battle costumes. Give them some of the best looking battle costumes in the game and watch that money come in. And not just from a developer standpoint, it's, it's really cool to make more money. But as a player, so many people out there like me, I love Ren. But there's not a whole lot more I can do other than just taking Ren with me into battle, which is, the, which is the same it's always been. For over two years since the Japanese server, I've four slot Ren on both servers. I actually have a total, I've drawn a total of 10 Rens between both servers on two accounts, um, because I just, I keep getting Ren, I, I don't know why, I just have so many Rens. Um, but I just take her with me into battle, and it's the same always. Almost three years for the Japanese server that I've taken Ren with me into battle, and it's been the same all the time. I would love to actually go into battle with Ren looking different. I don't think that's too much to ask for and it would make money. So yeah, to bring it all to a point, I think it would be better for, for players that play the game and want to put money into the game. They would get a lot more out of the game. Um, they would actually have an incentive to, uh, to play the game, maybe to roll for new characters so they can get more uh, the battle costumes for newer characters as well. Uh, they, would be able, you, they would be able to finally do something with their older characters. They, uh, for example, like Ren or Alina or Karin, uh, they could do more with those characters as well. They would get costumes. So for the players, it would be really cool to have something like this. Uh, free to plays would have to wait for a little while, but that's kind of the point. Um, but even so, as a free to play, I still think it's fair because they, it doesn't have a gameplay impact at all. If it has absolutely zero gameplay impact, I don't think you can be too sad as a free to play if it takes like multiple months to get like two costumes or whatever or one costumes, I don't think you would be too sad. Of course, there will still be plenty of people who would complain because everyone complains. My record is one of is extremely free to play, uh, free to play uh, friendly in its gameplay, and there's still a whole bunch of people who complain all the goddamn time. You wouldn't be able to get rid of that, but I still think it's really fair to say, okay, this is something for people who want to pay free to plays, get it, but like quite a long time later, and of course the developer would be really happy because, like I said, the a bonus amount of work that it would need to create this probably isn't too high but I think it could actually make a pretty large difference in the amount of money earned. Just to pull back for Azure Lane, 
Azure Lane uh, really makes like 99% of its money probably through marriage and skins. Of course, we can't do marriage and micro record. Let's not think about that. But most of it through skins. And they are one of the top earning uh, mobile games out there ever, probably, uh, alongside Freight Ground Order. So yeah, why not? Why not do it? So then, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave a comment below if you want to talk to me about this. If you want more micro record content, of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And once again, if anyone from Inplex or FRS is watching, uh, I would be, if any of these ideas what would actually make it into the game uh, and you have problems about, um, I don't know about, because I know that legally um, there might be some troubles with putting something into the game that someone else has mentioned to you. Um, but like I said, I would be willing to like put it on paper that I waive all rights to what I've said here. Um, but yeah, that's that. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a comment and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.